Hi friends, welcome back to Farm Girl Diaries. It's February 4th and I'm sitting outside in my garden. It is absolutely gorgeous outside. So um, I decided to come out here and get the bunny out and I decided while we're out here with my neighbor who just got a four wheeler. So that's fun. <laughs> I thought we would go over my spring plants. I have the bunny just chilling outside. She was running around like a crazy bunny earlier. This is a terrible time to shoot a video, but when you live in a neighborhood, I guess you don't really have much choice. Um, and he's still going for a while. And as nice as it is, I have a feeling he's gonna go the rest of the day. So we're gonna make the best of it. <laughs> Um, I want to talk about the garden plants this year because we're doing something different. We're doing a couple different things this year and we're uh, going in a new direction and we're going to try to start becoming profitable. So I'm really excited. I really hope he's done soon. Or at least like we'll drive further around the block and not just like up and down our little alleyway. Anywho, so, okay. <laughs> Are we done? Okay. So, <laughs> we're doing a couple of things differently this year. It's sharp and pokey as a pepper plant. And I'm really excited for what we're doing differently this year. So last year I made a big point to can everything that I eat to can two years of it. And the reason being is because I thought of some things that might come up. I don't know what he's doing. I honestly don't even know if he's running around or if he's just like revving his engine. I have no idea. <laughs> so I apologize in advance, but hopefully this isn't as bad on the video as it is in real life, which I doubt, but I digress. So, um, I made this point to can two years worth of everything in case one year, maybe we have a bad year, we have a drought, maybe we don't have a good weather. Um, I know my first garden year, it rained for like the entire month of July and all my tomatoes split on the vine before they were even green, or sorry, before they were even like pink. They split while they were green. So things like that, you can't really control. You can't do anything about. So I realized I was kind of putting a big emphasis on all of my produce and that I need to get it every single year. That if I would have a year where I don't get tomatoes, then I don't can my tomatoes and then I'm out all my tomato products. And then what do I do? Do I go buy tomatoes from the store? Do I just buy that product that year like what do I do and so I realized I needed to be smarter about my canon for a couple different reasons number one again in case I have a bad year number two in case I would have a medical emergency like this year I just had my appendix appendix taken out a week ago and um I'm shocked at how tired I am like the incisions and everything I've got I don't I don't think the inside is healed but um I'm shocked at how tired I am I, I, and I can't lift more than 10 pounds. I have all these restrictions for like at least six weeks. So I'm really happy that this happened now and this didn't happen in garden season. Because I wouldn't have been able to garden. <laughs> so that's another reason. Um, and then a third reason and, and probably honestly the biggest reason that I chose to do two years of gardening or two years of canning at, in, at once is I don't have a massive garden. I one day want to have a stupidly massive garden, but I'm not there yet. So last year, and I'm gonna talk about this a little bit later, last year I really did focus on a lot of new things. Um, but my typical year, I typically plant around 20 tomato plants. I typically plant 25 to 30 peppers. Um, and so I always end up not having enough space and kind of running out of space. And then I'm trying to prioritize like, what do I grow? What do I not grow? So by canning two years worth of stuff, this year I'm making everything smaller. So it's So 
So instead of doing two year or instead of doing 20 tomato plants, I'm only doing eight this year. And that'll mean that it's mostly for fresh Eden, but then I can do smaller cannon projects, which will hopefully keep me up. So once I do one full year, Once I do one full year of canon everything to last me for two years, then each year I can do smaller, less plants, smaller canon days, and still hopefully kind of keep up that number of cans that I have on my shelf, if that makes sense. So basically, I didn't want to have um, 20 tomato plants worth of tomatoes coming in anymore because it was getting to be a lot for me to take care of. I've grown in what I can and what I preserve and what I need to preserve every single year. And it was getting to be stressful. Um, and it was getting to be really hard for me to do it, to be honest. So I think by kind of making a big push last year to get two years worth of items, that this year I can take a step back and do much smaller canon projects and kind of just like replenish what I've used so far. And then we hopefully never have to do any of those big, massive canon days again. Um, so that's one thing that we're doing. So I'm cutting back everything. Instead of like 20 tomato plants, I'm doing eight. <laughs> I'm doing eight tomatoes. And instead of like 30 peppers, I think I've got it down to about 17 peppers. Um, so, and there's a lot of different types of peppers. So I don't feel bad for still having 17. I feel like that's a good number to have. Um, so that's one thing that we're doing differently. We are definitely kind of downsizing and hopefully downsizing our canon days as well. Number two, what we're doing is last year I tried a lot of new varieties. I tried ground cherries for the first time, tomatillas, tamarillos, um, I forget what else at this point. But that's all, I'm not... I'm really tired of that. But I'm not doing any of that this year. I'm not trying anything new. We're sticking to tried and true. Um, last year I was really feeling the desire to do all these new things. And this year I'm not. This year I just kind of want to stock the pantry, stock the freezer, and kind of just like stock everything. Who buys a four-wheeler in a neighborhood? Can I just ask this question? Who buys a four-wheeler in a neighborhood? He's right back there. He did apparently. any new things this year it's all just tried and true so that's the second new thing the second thing that I'm doing differently this year which is exciting because it's given me a lot more space last year I, all the new things that I did I did th I think I did like three tomatillas a tamarillo one ground cherry um I did all these different things that took up a lot of space <laughs> this in a day that he's not out there but he I think it's here all of the time and I'm getting annoyed it has been like 30 minutes of just this Caitlin you're being mean you live in a neighborhood shut your mouth valid point anywho and then the fourth new thing that I'm doing this year that I'm really excited about is last year we did an experiment where we grew our potatoes in the fall so typically you plant potatoes in April, you harvest them in about mid-July. And when I tell you, potatoes are one of my favorite things to harvest because it's like you're digging up treasure. You don't know what you're gonna get. You don't know how many you're gonna get. It's really, I think it's really exciting. Um, but when I tell you that last year, I dug up these potatoes in the middle of July and I hated every single second of it. It was beyond hot and When potatoes need to come out, they need to come out. And they typically need to come out around the hottest week in July for me. The hottest week of summer is when my potatoes are always ready. Um, so I really, really, really hated pulling my potatoes last year. For one of my favorite things, I get so much enjoyment out of it, I didn't have any enjoyment <laughs> pulling them. So what I decided to do, to do this year, well, what I did last year is I did a fall 
plants and not potatoes. So I went to the grocery store, I bought potatoes just in the in the um, produce section, and a little sore. And I put them in the ground around the end of July, and I harvested them about mid October. And I said, if I just get baby potatoes, like that's fine. I'm okay with that. I got full big potatoes. I got a great harvest. Um, so I'm gonna do that again. So that's exciting for two different reasons. Number one, um, I plant them in July, which I think I can plant them easier than kind of harvest them. Just kind of stick them in the dirt. I think will be easier than digging through the dirt. That's number one. Number two, potatoes take up a big amount of space, especially for the amount of potatoes that I grow. I typically grow around 15 pounds. I, I plant around 15 pounds of potatoes. Um, so what's nice is that takes up a big amount of space that by not doing it in the spring and pushing it to the fall to a fall planting or like I guess late summer or early fall planting I had that entire space that typically every year up till now has been potatoes that I get to plant other stuff in so it feels like to me I just gained a whole bunch of in-ground space hey Vicky and the last thing that I'm doing that I'm really excited about is this year I'm gonna try to start on a very small scale to have a profitable, a profitable flower farm. So let me get you up here. Let me walk you around and show you where all of this stuff is gonna be happening. Okay, so we're over in this area right here. So this, if you're new to my channel, used to be a tree. <laughs> it's a really big, like mulch area, and it used to be a really big maple tree um, that unfortunately I was forced to cut down. Um, it was sick and it was unhealthy. Part of it came down once and I had to take the rest of it down. So I ended up making that. Let me go over here into the shade, <laughs> maybe. So I ended up making that into a movie pit area, which I thought was really great. Um, bought all the stuff for it, did all the things. And then guess who didn't use the movie pit once? Me. <laughs> so I made that movie pit, thought it was fan a fantastic idea but I didn't set the projector up once, didn't use it once. So I set up that movie pit. I thought it was a fantastic idea and I still do. I think the idea of like an outdoor movie pit is fantastic. The back of that garage would have been perfect. I just never ever used it. <laughs> um, I just never ever used it. So while I still think it's a fantastic idea, it's a waste of space and I wanna do something different with it. So underneath all of the mulch is just a tree stump. I had the tree stump ground out, but it's, I didn't have the roots pulled. So there's still a tree stump. Um, so I don't really think, unless I brought in soil, I couldn't really plant grass there. So that's okay. I'm thinking that's where the new flower farm is gonna be. So I'm doing a couple of different things this year um, that I think I'm gonna take that space over for. So first of all, I think I'm gonna do heavy beds of flowers. I'm gonna get small, just raised beds off of Amazon, just cheap metal raised beds. Um, and I think I'm gonna plant each one with a different flower. Right now I'm thinking one Snapdragon. Hold on, let me find the buddy. There she is. I'm thinking one bed full of Snapdragons, one bed full of Zinnias, and at least one bed full of sunflowers. And then I have a ton of other flowers, both perennials and annuals that I plant uh, throughout my garden. So I'm thinking, that this might be the time for me to really put some emphasis on trying to have a flower farm. I'm gonna grow what I typically grow in this garden, but I realize I don't really like to cut a lot of the stuff from my garden because it's normally covered in bees, which is kind of why I plant it for both the beauty and for the bees and the birds. So last year I had a, last year I really wanted to have a flower, a flower farm and I didn't because I didn't want to take away from bees and the birds. So this year, I think I'm gonna do it. So I have two beds already that I bought in the fall um, so I think I'm gonna buy at least two more with that purpose. Um, I also am gonna do, which I haven't done before, I'm gonna buy um, probably a hundred. I'm, I'm gonna see if I can buy, if I have enough room to buy a hundred um, strawberry plants. Um, I have one green stalk. The green stalk I have has strawberry, what do they call their ever, every year, ever, ever barren they're ever barren strawberries which means they give me strawberries throughout the summer and so they don't give me a lot they don't really give you enough to like i have a whole green stalk of 50 plants they don't really give me enough to 
make a pie or make anything out of, but they're enough that you can snack on strawberries throughout the summer. Um, I decided that I also want to get June barren strawberries so that I can do a cannon project and kind of do a preserving project. So I have my green stalk with my ever barren. Um, I don't have the money right now to buy another green stalk and I have a ton of those dollar store strawberries or not, not strawberries, dollar store like planters that are kind of like a green stalk knockoff. Um, so I'm going to put those over in that area as well, what I'm calling the movie pit area. Um, I'm going to try to do like three towers of ever barren strawberries in hopes that I can get a big strawberry harvest here on this homestead. Um, and then along, can't really see it on the back of the garden. Um, there's nothing planted there and I want to fix that this year. So I think I might, I might do blueberries, I might do grapes, I don't really know. So we're going to keep in mind what we're going we're gonna to do on the back of the garden. And then additionally, in that space, in the movie pit area, I'm going to do my squash and my pumpkins. Um, I really want to be able to kind of like let them go and let them kind of go everywhere and grow a good amount of butternut squash and a good amount of pumpkins. So hopefully, maybe, if I can grow enough, maybe to sell a few um the hope is to just make a maybe make a little bit of money i'm not gonna make near what i put into this garden yet but i want to start moving in that direction i've had this dream of being profitable for years and i keep saying the scale that i have i can't be profitable at and i'll say for vegetables that's true um i can't be profitable with the vegetables that i have but maybe with flowers so we have that space that we can't do anything with so i'm gonna try to make it into a profitable farm flower farm um okay so those are the big things that we're doing definitely this year and i'm so excited so i'm gonna wrap up this video by giving you a tour of where everything's going this year what my plans are and we'll see if i stick to this plan <laughs> okay so behind me is what i call i call my garden has different areas it has different names and this for reasons i don't really know is called the potato patch it's only grown potatoes once it's grown other things more than that, but for reasons I don't know, this is a potato patch. And this is where I'm going to start my brassicas. And I think this is a genius idea. So keep in mind, I'm not starting my potatoes until probably mid June, maybe early June. I'm going to plant my brassicas, my broccoli, my cauliflowers, my kale, uh, no, my broccoli, my cauliflowers, and my cabbages in this whole big space. And then with this space, once July comes around, all that stuff is going to be about done anyway. I'll harvest that stuff, clear it out, and then I'll put my potatoes in here for a fall, uh, fall harvest. So what kind of sucked about this space last year is I, what did I do? I planted my potatoes in here in April. I harvested them in July. So this has been sitting empty since like July 18th, which is a waste of my space. So I think this is going to be a really fantastic use at clearing now we have sirens this is not my day so i think this is gonna be a really fantastic use of this space so that this space will stay completely filled from march to october so i'm really loving that idea now let me give you a quick scan of the garden in all its emptiness and then we'll show you where everything is going as of now Okay, so here is my spring brassicas and then potatoes. These two beds are going to be my pepper beds. So I'm hoping to do about 17 peppers in these two beds. I know that's more than enough space for 17 peppers. I'm kind of hoping I can get away with 17 peppers in just this bed. I love using my raised beds for my spring crop. So beets, carrots, lettuces. So these couple of beds here, I have one here, one here, and then I have two down there. Are gonna, one's gonna hold beets, one's gonna hold carrots, and one's gonna hold lettuces. I'm a big, also a big fan of rotational grazing, not rotational grazing, rotational planting. So this is my snap pea trellis. Um, I plant snap peas on him every year. I'm getting a second one this year. I've wanted the second one for ages. It's 17 bucks at Lowe's, so I don't know why I've held off, but I'm moving him and let's, walk around i'm moving him because that bed i think i forget what's in that bed i think beets no lettuce is in that bed and then beets is in the one in front of it 
And then in these two beds here, I'm actually pushing these together. So I have a big space here that I don't honestly need. Let's get out of the sun a little bit. <laughs> So I have my table, which honestly doesn't have a lot of space. I love my table, um, but I want to give that some more space. So how I designed this garden, I designed it aesthetically, <laughs> is I wanted these bed, bed, space, bed, space, bed. Well, this I feel like is a lot of wasted space. So what I'm going to do, at least for now, my plan is to, hold on, really hot. What I'm going to do now, at least for now, is I'm going to combine these two beds together, move them together. So it's going to create one bigger bed, again, to separate it in the middle, but one bigger bed. And then it'll give this dining area some more space. So I'm hoping to bring in maybe some pavers or some patio stones in order to kind of make that more of a firm space. Right now, it just kind of, my table and my chairs just kind of sink through the mold. So I want to hopefully fix that this year. But I'm hoping by combining these beds that that'll give me some more space. But again, we're gonna have carrots in one and I think lettuce again in another one. This bed here is another bigger bed. This I hope to put six tomatoes in. I'm gonna stagger my tomatoes. Um, oh, looks like, is Figgy going away? I just cleaned out her hut and I don't think she's a fan. So I'm hoping I can fit six beds in here, or six tomatoes in this bed if I stagger them. Um, it'll be a little close, but I think that'll be okay. I do grow my tomatoes pretty close, and um, I do decent at it. I do grow, I do get some disease, but you don't, I don't have that much space. We gotta make it work. So six are gonna go here, and then I do need one more space for, I think, I, like I said, I wanna grow seven as of right now. So I need to have, I need to find a spot for one more, but we can do that later. Um, and then if we go to this space over here, so this is what I call, I actually don't even know what I call this space. I don't think this space has a name. Um, but I'm going to grow beans along the back row. I really love growing beans on this space here. Beans on the back row. And then I'm going to grow sweet potatoes in the front of it. So if you come up here, let's come to the top. Figgy is acting suspicious. Let's keep an eye on her. Come to the top. This goes the whole Whole way down it's about 35 40 feet and so I'm gonna try to that entire length in sweet potatoes and then the very last thing sweet potatoes and beans and then the very last thing is this space here and this I call the pasture um, just because it's nice big open sunny space I am gonna put corn in this space this year. I didn't plant corn last year. I planted corn the year before and had a really bad harvest. I planted corn in this potato patch over here and I had a really bad harvest. So I'm gonna plant corn. I planted corn in this space before. I'm gonna do it again. Um, I'm gonna heavily plant and I know I'm not gonna get my year's worth of corn out of this, but if I can supplement, that would be really fantastic. Um, so I'm, cause corn got expensive this year. I know I can't grow all that I need, but again, if I can grow some, that would be better than nothing. So this whole pasture is going to be corn. The only thing I don't have a space for yet that I don't know where I'm putting is my onions. Um, I need to figure out where my onions are going. They go in a raised bed. I just don't know where that raised bed is going to be yet. <laughs> So we will figure that out at some point. Um, I'm kind of really hoping I can get my peppers in one bed and I can have one bed open for onions. Um, or maybe we add another bed to this space because you know, I still don't think I have a big enough garden. But that is my plans for this spring garden. I am so excited. And even though it's only February, I'm getting ready to start my brassicas. Um, we have really, like it's, it's February, we're outside. We have really nice weather. I'm really hoping snow is done. Um, and then Puxatawney Phil, 
did not see his shadow. If you're, oh, I don't know if the whole country is aware of that tradition or if it's just us. I think it is. I think everyone knows about Groundhog's Day. Um, but Phil didn't see a shadow, which means we're supposed to have an early spring and I'm here for it. So I'm actually going to start my brassicas today, my cabbage, my broccoli, and my cauliflower. And those are all cold hardy crops, kale, Swiss chard, all that stuff. Those are all cold hardy crops. So they can actually go out. I typically put them out towards the end of March. Um, I'm starting them now in hopes <laughs> that uh, we have a nice solid March and I can get them out maybe a little bit earlier. And so my hope is we could potentially be gardening in a month which would be fantastic. Um, and then I did want to give an update. I did heavily mulch all of my spaces this year. I got a load of free wood chips and I spent, my dad and I, my mom as well, spent a lot of time um, moving mulch and mulch in this space. So what I've done is I really struggle with thistle, um, especially in this area here. I really, really struggle with thistle. Um, and it was growing. Now it's gotten too cold to not to grow, which is great. Um, but I wanted to heavily plant or heavily lay the mulch in order to keep kind of um, hopefully the weeds down until I'm back in here and I can kind of start pulling and start planting and stuff. So one of the new tasks I'm gonna have to do this year, is I'm gonna say that this mulch is probably seven, eight inches thick. It's thick. So we're gonna have to dig out the mulch and then we will dig it out. Um, and kind of move it to the aisles. So we kind of started mulching in the fall. I'm gonna keep mulching um, as I plant these areas on the corn patch, we'll, the mulch can move to the aisles and then we'll move some of it back for actual weed control, but we don't need as much as I put down right now as actual weed control. Um, but this so far has worked well. Again, we're, we are in winter, but I think it has worked well to keep um, some of the weeds at bay. At least that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> Uh, oh, and one more thing we are going to do is, so we have, we have that arch there. Um, I wanted this for a while. I'm going to put a second arch right at the end of this bed here and put a second arch and that's going to grow my cucumbers, my pickling cucumbers. So, um, we're going to be building that here in the spring as well. So I'm really excited to get back in the garden. I'm really happy that my surgery happened and my appendix issue happened now and it didn't happen, um, you know, when I really needed to be out here working. So that's a huge blessing. Um, I'm gonna keep working on healing and um, hopefully I'll be back out here soon getting this all planted and getting this ready for the spring. So I think I'm gonna go see if Figgy is ready to go back inside her hutch and we're gonna go inside and get some dinner started. But it is for February to be outside and enjoying it. Ugh absolutely gorgeous. I love it. I'll see you next time, friends. Bye.